Wild West. Why was this territory actually wild? This is an era that lasted only only 50 years, has become a real myth American culture, laying the foundations many modern things and processes. It was all cowboys, bandits, the war with Indians and each other. But real the image of America of the 19th century looks quite not like we're used to seeing in movies. The Wild West was really wild so it turned out that the main source of information about the Wild West for modern men movies. Westerns. At the same time, it is worth considering that almost all significant Westerns were shot by Italians. As a result, there is a serious change in real historical images. First of all the real cowboys were by no means not heroes. Ordinary shepherds driving the herd cows ass forward on the prairies. Secondly, the cowboys have never fought with Indians. The redskins were oppressed by everyone who is not lazy. Bandits. Smugglers. More than the others. Of course, the American army. But just not cowboys. And cowboys have never been satisfied those most famous duels in the middle of the main street of the town. Yes, and in general, they took out their weapons extremely rarely. Since we're talking about weapons, then it was in the days of the Wild West everyone. A man could not be considered a man, unless he had a revolver. But also naturally, it was necessary to be able to shoot. With this, too, not everything is so rosy how western movies. Of course there were many people who could filigree handle revolvers and get into the wing of a fly from 50 meters. But the main part the population owned firearms at a level sufficient for hunting and protection is property. By the way, it is with the times of the Wild West in America appeared tradition. Be sure to keep weapons in the house. Those same bandits and robbers of the Wild the West in large cities was quite rare guests, at least because in, in such cities, the police really provided security. You need to understand that there are no warning shots and long negotiations were not practiced then. If the criminal robbed someone, or worse, killed, he was just shot without warnings. Therefore, most bandits preferred to live in the countryside localities. Here they were quite successfully engaged cattle rustling train robberies, and banks. Official American authorities in such places there were practically none. Order and law were given into the hands of private security agencies, so-called land offices. They traded their ex-territorial jurisdiction and coped with law enforcement functions. But the best level public order was still conditioned by in those that many bandits are successful manipulated the fear of their own the pursuers. So for example they assured what if the sheriff chases him then he'll kill his whole family. It will kill day and night. To hunt. Follow the trail until he destroys all his relatives. And I must say that sometimes it was not empty threats at all. Therefore, many the sheriff preferred just not to mess with bandits. In the same westerns, the American army always came out victorious in any clashes with the Indians. To be fair, I must say, but quite often, that's exactly what happened. But not always. One of the biggest defeats happened in the summer of 1876 years, when the combined Lakota forces of the Northern Cheyennes were opposed by 7 Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army States. This battle became known as the Battle of the Little Bighorn. The forces of the parties were initially unequal. There were almost three times as many Indians. 650 soldiers against almost 2,000 Indians. The famous commander of George Custer did not even heavy artillery could help. For several hours the terrible a bloody fight, the result of which it was a confident victory of the Indians. Speaking it will not be superfluous to tell about the Indians and about the most famous are their customs. Scalps from their victims. How strange whatever it sounds like. But to take scalps it was the white hunters who started on red skins. The thing is that in the end the 19th century began a real mess Indian baiting. They were raided and they were shot like some wild ones animals. And to do all this not only by force the regular army in the genocide willingly a huge number participated mercenaries. After all, for every person killed the Indian could be obtained from the authorities. $25. It was only necessary to prove the fact of murder. And the most reliable the way to do this is to give as confirm the head of the victim. But to carry with you heads that are difficult to transportation and take up a lot of space it's too troublesome. It is much more convenient to simply remove it from the head scalp, throw it in the bed, and then present it when issuing money. So thugs did. And the Indians later they just started paying them in their own coin. It's going to sound pretty funny today, but in the middle of the 19th century, none decent a person would not allow himself to appear on people in jeans. Then only cowboys wore them. Gold diggers and slaves. Jeans appeared like cheap practical work clothes for work on plantations in the southern Caribbean. And from there they later they came to the southern states of the USA. With the first samples of jeans were white. They began to paint them later. Bison in the time was destroyed by millions. Creepy uncontrolled mass hunting of bison. 
which began in 1830 years and a little it did not lead to a complete disappearance this type of animal in the entire North America. Traditionally, the bison were alone of the most important animals providing survival of many Indian tribes. The Indians hunted them for food, making clothes, dwellings of tools and utensils. But they always killed exactly as many as it is necessary to satisfy your life needs needs. But white American hunters and railway companies have begun predatory extermination of bison in mostly for the skins to supply the army and sending them to Europe. If at first 1,800 about 200,000 bison were killed over the years then in the period from 1,870 to 1,875 years about two were killed annually with half a million bison. Result the number of bison decreased from 30 million in 1800 to less than a thousand by the end of the century.